We get a lot of questions about how to work with audio in Premiere Pro. And of course, you're importing your video, but you're also importing your audio. And we find that, that people don't dig deep enough inside the preferences in Premiere Pro. Some of you out there are stereo folks. You like your stereo files. If you're a, a Final Cut user, then you might like working in mono. There's complete control inside Premiere Pro how to import your files and how to treat them and map the audio. Let's go have a look. So I have some clips down here at the bottom. I'm just going to drag one of these clips in. And when you import a clip, I'm bringing it in through the media browser. Up in the top, you can see four mono channels. That's what this particular file has. When I drag this down to a sequence that I've already created, it's going to create four mono files. So there they are. There's my one, two, three, four mono tracks, and I have stereo tracks sitting there that aren't being used. So a good idea is to clean this up when you don't need them, right click, delete tracks, and you get a dialog box and I'll just say delete the empty audio track. So you could pick a certain one. I'm just deleting them, click OK, boom, all right. So that's step one. We brought in a file, it had four mono tracks, and boom, we're just working with that. We have a nice clean setup. Now let's import something that is uh, two stereo files and let's figure out how to turn that into mono files. So let me just delete this out of here and I'll go down to a different folder and bring in a different file. Drag this in, and I picked one that has stereo. So I'll drop this in, and remember we had four mono tracks, so they're not being used. All the way down there is our stereo track. So if we want the stereo, you want to clean this up, go back to delete these tracks, delete empty, click OK, and there we go. So we worked with four mono, great. We worked with, two, with a stereo track, great but I don't want stereo. I want two mono tracks. Your first inclination might be to go over here to the uh, project panel, right click, ooh, look, it says modify audio channels, and it's grayed out. It's grayed out because you've already used this clip and it's in the timeline. You have to make these choices before you use the clip in the timeline. Um, if you have to use that clip, then uh, you, you can have to delete it out of the timeline and then fix it and put it back in. But let's work with this the right way. So I'll delete this from here. Now when I go back, right click, modify, audio channels, mono. Now I want two mono channels. Click OK, and look up at the top. It says two mono, drag it into my sequence, and it's going to create two mono tracks. So that should give you an idea of how to fix the stuff as it's coming in, but there's a better way to work. In the preferences, we can tell Premiere Pro how to treat every single audio file when we're bringing it in. Let's go look at that. Let me delete this out of here, and I'll delete these clips. Both of these clips, gone. In the Premiere Pro menu or the Edit menu on Windows, Preferences, Audio. Inside here, by default, it says Audio Channels Default Track Format Use File. So it's going to use the file. Remember, when I brought in 4 mono, it made 4 mono, stereo, stereo. But I'm going to force it to be mono. Say, you know what? I like mono. Click OK. I'll bring in those same files. Remember, this one was stereo. Bring it in. Click on it, ooh, look at that, two mono, drag it down here, two mono, done. You didn't know it was that easy, did you? You just gotta dig down inside those preferences and figure that out. Now, from now on, whenever you're editing those files, they'll always come in mono. Or, as you saw in there, you can have the Mysterio or 5.1. A Couple of other things uh, that are important that I'd like to show you. One is that we've got clip data down here and we've got uh, track data. So if we're trying to record some automation, so when I play this back, I've got two tracks, and you know, let's say that I don't really want two tracks, I just want one. Just for this demonstration, I'm holding the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, select that one, delete it. I now have something in Audio 2, and if we go up to my mixer, we can see there's my Audio 2 mixer. If I want to record these movements, I'll just click up here and write the following information. 
Now we're here at a small resolution and I keep having to, you know, scroll around inside here, but on most monitors, you've got enough room to work with that audio mixer. But remember, you could drag that out to a completely different part of the user interface. I will push play and move this down, up and down. And when we go back and play, if we want this to read, we go up to read the information. And now when I play this back, it's going to read that information. All right. So you'll come down here and you'll say, well, where is that information? Twirl this down and you'll look at it and go, where's that information? How come I can't see? I'm expecting to see keyframes of when I move this up and down. Well, you're looking at the clip keyframes. Remember, we can have keyframes for clips and keyframes for tracks. Look at this, show track keyframes. Ah, there they are, ding, very easy. So this allows you to do all of that automation. Remember, anything inside here, when we go uh, inside our effects, drop this down, pop this up, we've got all of these other effects in here that we can use and you can keyframe and control completely and they'll show up on the track down at the bottom. So that's an important thing to remember. Okay, um, one of the last things I want to show you is that we can take this clip over here and if this isn't available, it's because um, you know, you're, you're clicking in the wrong place. Although this is a clip menu, this feature doesn't show up when you're clicking on the clip in the timeline. It only shows up over on the left-hand side. It's just an interesting way to think about breaking out your audio. So uh, over on the left-hand side, there's my clip. Remember, we have two mono tracks and I can break those out to two mono tracks over there. So we've got way more flexibility inside Premiere Pro than you think in importing and controlling and mapping our audio. We've got controls in here to map to hardware devices. So if you've got multiple inputs and outputs, we'll map to anything that your operating system has. So let's start working with the features and the preferences in Premiere Pro to get our audio straight.